I think you've probably shared what your first impression of me mm. was, but how you how you did make that assessment when you thought maybe I was bipolar. Okay. Um, um, when I meet someone for the first time, um, obviously we talk about things in general and then the problems that they have been having and also the issues that I could perhaps help them with were was housing, mental health issues, um, GP if they've got depression, pills are a last resort because there's always a reason why someone is depressed but sometimes they need it just short term and then they can come off the pills. Um, I'm not a great lover of shoving pills down people's throats but sometimes short term it does help. Um, so with you, you know, it was really, the problem was your partner that you were with at that time and getting you to understand that what he was doing wasn't normal, it wasn't right and it wasn't acceptable but because as we talk more your background and history of childhood came out and also that was a huge factor that you were used to that behaviour and trying to change somebody who's had that for 40 odd years ingrained in them is quite difficult. It's not a first meeting fix, it's a long term fix for that. So then we got on about housing, talked about your son who you're very proud of and he's a credit to you and you've done very very well as a mother with all the problems that you had. So never forget that either. Thank you, darling. Um, uh, yeah, he's lovely. You've done really well with him, which a lot of mums can't cope, and they end up having their children taken away from them um, for the sake of both of them, really. So, you know, you did well to keep together. What else did we talk about? It was two years ago. <laughs> I know. What was the... I think we like, covered everything, really, yeah. from relationships, housing whether you've been to your GP to go and have a chat because you said you'd never been diagnosed. And I really did think there was definitely wasn't normal behaviour. Uh, so what was it you didn't think was normal behaviour? It was the ex total extremes. I mean, everybody gets upset and I always carry handy andies in my bag with me because people do cry and that's normal and it's natural. But yours would be absolutely howling in the middle of a, su you know, a supermarket coffee shop and really really distraught and then next time you'd be absolutely high as a kite happy and bubbly and you never knew what I was going to get every time he turned up so it was very very extremes the personality which of course we know what it is now yeah I mean another girlfriend of mine has asked me if it's bipolar mm. she has asked me if it's bipolar she thinks she said please would you get yourself tested mm. for bipo bipolar I don't think it is. I think it is the borderline personality disorder because there's that the key thing with the. But they are very similar. I they think. are very they are similar. Very similar. Yeah. And I mean, you're not that way now. That's interesting. You do get upset, obviously, because people do over certain things. I mean, you had a lot of stress with the move. Didn't know where you were going to be living. You know, had nowhere to go. So obviously, that's really stressful. But no way like you were two years ago. Really? Oh God, no. Not at all. I'm always really shocked at listening to somebody describing me. I feel quite overwhelmed actually and very emotional about it, about the pain that I was in and I wish, I wish I'd known that you knew. Again, we go back to the I wish I know that mm. you knew, I wish that I'd, um, I wish that I, I think I did allow you to help me, didn't I? You did to a certain extent, but you still had your barriers up, so it did take a long time to climb over those but I think you know you've been sort of pushed away or let down by so many people you know it's natural you are going to have barriers up but we sort of persevered and got there in the end I know you're bloody yeah. marvellous uh, the thing is it's it's um it's the it's the it's this horrendous feeling when someone's trying to get close to mm. me of what are you going to do to me it's I trust don't, again though isn't it but I don't know what happens to me. I, I have an idea, but when people get after a certain level, they come a bit closer, and then they, and then, and then I expect something hor horrific to happen, and and so I can't. I have to push away. And the saddest thing is for me is that you weren't. You were just trying to love me and trying to be kind and. And I couldn't, and the more, I remember I, on a level, the more you tried to get close to me, I, I didn't know what you were going to do. I was really scared, but somehow, and I didn't think you could see me either. That's the other thing we wanted to bring up really, is your ability 
And this is what I think is, is such a credit to you and the work that you do, but specifically you. And I know you don't do compliments very well, but... <laughs> Um, the thing is, is that, is that the mirroring, which we do, Ian and I discussed, you know, it's like this mirroring and your ability. When I used to turn up, you used to say to me, I can see you, I can see you across the room. I know you've been with him. Mm. I know you went back with him because I can see what you look like. I can see you. And then there'd be this other thing of, I look really good. And the problem was, is that people, if people only see me a bit, and then they don't see me for ages. They think that I'm like that all the time. Well, and it's, absolutely. And it's terrifying because they don't know this inner world of mine. Mm. But um, you mirror that to me. You, you, you say to me, people like you, you know, people that have had your experience are going to feel like this. I need that because that makes me feel secure. 